Next up, we get to hear once again from Jennifer Lynn, arguably the most important and best dressed Crossref employee, and also my boss. Um, she'll be talking about <laughs> simplifying and enriching Crossref services. All right, you will get paid this week. So one of the things that we will certainly be re-examining in light of all of the very um, great suggestions and feedback from Paul are the, um, the, the, the list of things that he addressed. Um, but I want to take the, a little bit of time. I know that um, it, it, this will be a really quick run through, but a little bit of time talking about the work that we have been trying to do this year to improve the services for our members and the community at large. Um, so it's broken down into simplifying and enriching existing services. On the first end, what we've been working on is to consolidate and streamline member tools. This is work that is still underway. We will continue be continually and, and make improvements to this over time. But it is really important, um, and it, it, it is a dedicated effort on behalf of staff to continue to make all of the different tools that exist out there, um, some of them heavily used, some of them not so much. Many of them can use an update because they were developed 18 years ago or 12 years ago. Um, this is just a list of the different ones that we've um, touched this year and um, in, move in trying to think of ways to make it easier, um, we've been rolling out new systems and or in making improvements to existing ones, those on the right. Some of the very manual as, um, aspects of our members' work, if it's creating a support ticket for particular tasks, we're trying to make those self-service. So that's part one of the reasons for that last bullet point on there. The, um, there's a fantastic blog post um, that Isaac Farley, who is here um, with us in, in Toronto, he wrote this and um, published it a, a bit ago. If you didn't catch it, I do encourage you to go back and look at it. It um, talks a bit about our new status dashboard page. Status.crossref.org is a dashboard to make the, our operations transparent. And this includes every single system that Crossref runs, which have external um, consumption. Um, and it's broken down by the different areas, whether it's the sites, the APIs, content registration, um, et cetera. It even includes the systems that are in beta. It includes the systems that we are, that Crossref's um, operations are dependent on, such as the handle system. Um, I definitely encourage you to go. One of the fast and great things about this is in the event that there is an incident that has happened, such as an outage, we will continual, continually report out our investigation over time on a timely basis. That way, people aren't just left hanging if they know that there's an outage. Um, we will be reporting, um, providing updates about um, how the, that fix is, is, is going. Okay, another aspect of um, simplifying services, it's a lot easier to retrieve the full corpus today than it was last year. Through Metadata Plus, if you're interested in this program, please see Jennifer Kemp. Um, but it's essentially, this, these snapshots are bulk downloads of the entire corpus, which um, we provide an updated um, zip file compressed file every single month. And it's available in both XML and JSON, whatever is your preference. Um, and, you know, as Paul mentioned, it takes quite a lot of time in order to pull for large data sets, whether it's, you know, um, just for your current content, whether it's for the content of, um, current content of all publishers and or back files. Um, this is, we hope, um, going to be of much help to those who use the, the Crossref member metadata. Okay, now enriching services, um, I hope all of you have heard about participation reports. What it does is it gives not only members, um, but the public, a clear view of um, metadata across 10 key best practices, right? And those really run the gamut from, you know, are you de depositing ORCID IDs? Are you providing similarity check URLs, um, funding award numbers, references, et cetera? And this information is not just the stats, really, that matter, but a, it contains quite a bit of, um, of detail about what is the importance of each of these 10 key best practices, how do you make improvements to your um, member participation through it. It also gives you more information to provide your business with a case for making these changes, sometimes um, at a cost if, you know, you have to change your submission system or change your, 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 your 
content registration process. Another aspect that um, we were able to roll out um, this year in 2018 is to streamline content registration for journal content. Um, Metadata Manager um, is still in progress and we will be building out this tool across all of the content types, but it's basically a, a way um, to replace the web deposit form where members can either register and or update, in some cases correct, um, the metadata records um, for your journal content at, at this point in time. It's expedited, there are no queues. Um, the, we, the tool accepts every single metadata element that we have in our schema. Um, for those who don't do reference matching, um, throw those references into the tool. We will match it for you and you can make the deposit straight away. Um, another one of the things that I mentioned earlier, self-service, title transfers um, can be a really big pain, right? And so we have um, incorporated this as a feature of, of Metadata Manager um, where it doesn't involve, you know, back and forth with our, with our support staff. Um, the, um, you just do it directly in the tool. And one of the big things that we are rolling out hopefully in the next month or two um, is affordances for doing bulk updates. Um, and in this system, hopefully removing a lot of the pain entailed in getting your column headers of your CSV file all properly formatted so that it goes through, gets processed um, with um, a f um, full, with 100% um, acceptance of all of the records and no rejections. So I think this may be the last one or maybe another one, but the fuller story of published content, I already went through this earlier. Um, I think we, we do believe that this is enriching metadata that is useful not only to the community at large, but also the members of our communities. Because while you obviously know what, pub, um, what publications you, you published, some of these activities that happen post-publication, some of these that happen pre, the, there are um, parties um, that you may or may not directly work with who have some of these links, linkages. And so getting that fed, fed back in, even to your platform, your content systems um, may be of interest to you. Things such as associated data and software, organisms that, has been, that have been extracted, cell lines, antibodies, tools, et cetera. One thing to note here is that um, just reaching back to the origins in 2000, you know, Crossref was founded because the publishers, original 12, 13 publishers felt that there was more power to be had when you came together to solve the problems. And at that point in time, the primary one was reference linking. That is still very much a part of what we do. But now we're moving from not only doing reference linking, pulling together all the references across um, publishers and, and the whole industry, but linking the whole of the web back to your content, back to member content. Okay, I lied, there's one more. Um, er, pending publications is something that we've also rolled out this year. It allows for publishers who, uh, until this point, um, you know, best practice was you do not register your metadata until after it's published. The DOI needs to resolve somewhere. But that posed a lot of problems, a number of problems not only for you publisher members, but also for others who may get their hands on a DOI, who may need to be able to track using a uni unique identifier the content as soon as it is published or even before it is published after acceptance. So there's more information on this bullet point on this slide um, in the bullet points than, than I'll go over. But essentially this is a mechanism by which publishers after acceptance can register a small set, a subset of metadata and that DOI will resolve to a Crossref hosted page that will provide, that will expose all the metadata that you provided us. The Required metadata is different um, um, and only a subset of the regular once published. But once you do publish, you just go through and as a standard practice, you register the content using your, your standard default content type, um, such as journal, article, books, et cetera. Um, and there are a suite of API enhancements um, that we have been working on this year. We've been looking at the um, representation, that, at the data that results um, across representations, both the XML and the JSON, just to make sure that all of the metadata is contained in both. Um, and that was one of the things that, that really involved quite a bit of work, but very, very important if we are to treat all of our metadata APIs. Um, on a similar level. We also put into place a polite pool um, that allowed um, consumers of the API who identified themselves through the email addresses to get um, dedicated servers and a higher rate limits. Um, that has really, I think, been underutilized and so 
the, taking this opportunity um, with a note from from Paul to communicate one of the things that that may be of, of benefit and is definitely one of the enhancements that that we built out this year. Um, the historic real time performance that's another mention of the status dashboard. Um, but but looking ahead is probably what you're very interested in. What will we be building out um, in, in the coming year in order to continue the work of consolidating, of sorry, simplifying and enriching the Crossref services, not only to the members, but the larger community. Um, we will be rolling out, um, you know, uh, more modernized versions of our content registration API, um, such that accepts native chats. That is definitely work that we have planned and that we will be engaging in next year. We know that a lot of the members have been wanting this for a while. Um, we will be working also on um, scale, further scaling our public API, specifically the REST API. Um, Metadata Manager, as I mentioned, will continue to develop um, such that those members who want to use this tool for more than journal articles will be able to do so. Um, we will be expanding the reporting that we make available to our members. Um, some of this has been somewhat ad hoc. We provide reports to our members when they ask for it. But th what we'd like to move towards is, is the way, self completely self-service way for, for members to be able to get access to it immediately. Um, the consolidation of documentation and education materials in crossdraft.org, that's one of the things that we've heard would be very, very helpful for those who are finding tidbits of different pieces of Crossref information across multiple sites. So that is a fairly large effort, if you can well imagine, across all of the content that we have across all of our products and services. Um, but that work is well underway and is one of the big um, key, key pieces of 2019. Um, we also have some um, enhancements and similarity check where they're gonna, there's going to be um, additional features to control exclusions, um, providing much more control for um, the journals to be able to specify what they want to include into the matching scores. Um, and part of that is um, expanding the billing reports too. I mentioned the reporting. Um, we know that um, the, our billing, our invoices um, could use with more detail. Um, it could also be more helpful it was, if it was integrated across more of our services. So we'll be making improvements in this area also in, in, in the, over the next um, year. All right, well, I hopefully, hopefully that wasn't too, too, too fast, but um, I, we can, we'll take some questions if there are any, and I'm happy to speak more specifically to any of them after the session. I have a quick question. What's the best way for people to keep up with updates during 2019? Yeah, that is a question. So as was mentioned, I think by Jeffrey, the blog post is one of our big um, mechanisms by which we share to the community. And, and one of the things is because we have a whole, the outreach team has a, a, a very well fleshed out um, set of channels by which to reach our members. But obviously the larger community, including the, the um, vast number of metadata users, are not part of our membership. And so this, in our view, is one of the most public ways in which we can share this out. Great, thank you. Also, um, also to reference another conversation point, we have quite a number of working groups, committees, and I think this was a point Jeffrey made. We want to encourage everyone, anyone, whether you're a member or not, to join them. Um, that way you not only know about what's coming down the pipeline as it pertains to the particular working group, but you are helping shape those developments. Sounds good. Thank cool. you, Jennifer.